putting in a food plot's great, but what happens when you can't get to it, hunt it, and get out safely? is Land of Whitetail TV. You can remodel the deer woods to suit your hunting needs. We're gonna go on a hunt on a property that I manage. This is utopia. Frankly, this is not real world hunting. I have remodeled the deer woods for my benefit other hunters benefits every single bit as much as for the health of the deer. For someone like Steve, who's a land manager who knows what he's doing, there's a plan, there is a, a method to his madness, and believe me, it's madness. I mean, he really gets into this stuff to the point where he's managing it specifically for the animals he wants to hunt. When you go to these places that are groomed, um, they're managed for deer, they're managed for big bucks, you can appreciate the amount of work and the type of work people like Bartillo put in. Food, water, and shelter. And it, it doesn't matter if you have nine acres or 9,000 acres. You need those things around because deer, they're gonna seek them out whether you have them or not. What we're trying, specifically trying to do is we're trying to keep the deer numbers in check with the habitat, what the habitat can support. Because as those deer numbers climb, they start, they start destroying that habitat. The deer numbers are going up, the carrying capacity is going down. It's an inverse relationship. When you come into a property and you analyze those ecotones, you know there's certain things that you can and can't do. There's certain food pots that you can put in because there's a bedding area over here or there's a travel corridor through there. Stuff you really have to study. If you have a spring on that property, why not develop it? And if you have brush, why not accentuate that brush? This is where you need to consult with a wildlife specialist, someone who does habitat management, land management. What you're trying to do is you're trying to design a system that is very low impact, high odds for the hunters, while also improving deer health. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady. Accurate. Deadly. Dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. When we return, the conditions here on Shotgun Opener are challenging to say the least. It started out just brutally hot. As a matter of fact, the other day was a record high temp. And with them, now comes wind. Real windy today. But you know what? You're never, ever, ever gonna kill anything when you stay in bed. Got to already enjoy an absolutely gorgeous sunrise. And we're hunting one of my favorite spots. I'd be lying to you if I said that I was extremely optimistic. You're watching Land of Whitetail. If you think land management is about going out and buying a tractor and a bag of seed, you got another thing coming. Steve Bartilla is hunting a piece of land he manages for a client in Illinois. So what you want to do is you want to design a habitat that accentuates deer health while also putting your hunting opportunities on steroids. It gives you a tremendous advantage because our greatest weapon is not our muzzleloader. It's not our bow. It is not our heart powered rifle. It's this right here. We have the ability to game plan. He has even designed spots for differing weather conditions. That's a good thing, since the conditions here on Shotgun Opener are challenging to say the least. It started out just brutally hot. As a matter of fact, the other day was a record high temp for this area. And with them, now comes wind. I've worked on 
this area for two years now. I took a bulldozer in there and I made a horseshoe back onto the ridge flat. I then went ahead and hinge cut this edge, made it so that deer can come out on both ends of that horseshoe. What we're hoping to catch is bucks transitioning back and forth across here. We've got some soybeans out here to keep the girls happy. And if a girl happens to show up today, I've got a doe take just waiting for her. So, the morning hunt was a bust. I, I knew it would be, to be honest with you, but you know what, you gotta go out and try. I purposely took us up to a redneck that was very, very low impact specifically because I didn't want to mess anything up. And I'll be honest with you here, I've been talking big about how we've set all this stuff up to get exactly this result, but I'd be lying to you if I said that I was extremely optimistic. We're still in the first day of shotgun season. The temp, the front is coming through. The temp has dropped from 63 degrees all the way down to the high 30s right now. On conditions like this, deer aren't gonna move a lot. So we are set up right on the doorstep. I went to the food source that is the closest to their bedding area I could find. Still not huge hopes for killing a buck this afternoon, but I'd really like to kill a doe. And man, I'd like to believe we can make it happen here. So let's see what happens. Slip out of the blind quick, slap a tag on it, come back in, get settled again. Not much longer, out comes some more deer. Roll another doe. Okay, so we got our second doe. And that's, that's gonna be it for doe hunting for the day. I'm thinking it's, you know, it's, it's a fun set, but is Mr. Big gonna show up? Is he? The, 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 both the bucks I was after are both five and a half year old animals. I'll tell you what, yeah, the temp has dropped nice, no, but that wind, it's howling. We need to remove some does. We've done it. We've got some meat for the freezer. We're doing good. Now, let's see if Mr. Big comes along. This is Land of Whitetail. This segment of Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Matthews. Deer Hunting Utopia is a good way to describe this property being managed by Steve Bartilla. We need to remove some does. We've done it. We've got some meat for the freezer. We're doing good. Now, let's see if Mr. Big comes along. As I was doing the wrap up, the, the cutaway for this, out walks a spike, and then out comes some does. And now I'm looking off in the distance, and there is just this huge bodied buck that I see cut up the rise towards where that doe went. I was just over there no more than five minutes before. Probably gonna turn south. No, he turned north. 
he hooked back around, came out that food plot. care what anybody tells you. Anybody that does a lot of hunting every once in a while, you're going to mess up. You shoot a lot of deer, you're going to make some mistakes. So what do I do? I back out. Luckily, I have a great relationship with the neighbors. So on the way out, I stop by there. This is an afternoon hunt. I'm going to let this deer lay overnight, but I'm going to need some help because I know there's not going to be a good blood trail at all. We're going to be finding it with our eyes. We're going to bird dog it. I ask, is there any chance I could bring a couple of your older sons with me? I've taken them both out youth hunting before. They are great kids, most respectful kids you could possibly imagine. You know, and most importantly, they listen. Next morning, pick up the boys. We head out. You two, you're my eyes. So the job you did on that doe during youth season that you shot, finding those little tiny specks of blood out in that short alfalfa field, that sold me right there. You got eyes. I normally wouldn't do something like this. These guys, I'm not even that worried that when I tell them what to do that they're gonna follow to their best ability. So now let's go get this deer. I happen to have two pairs of binocs with me. I'm gonna give each of the boys one. I mean, it's just fitting. They're out helping me find a deer, so I'm gonna give them something that helps them find deer better and something that they will absolutely cherish for a lifetime. All right, gentlemen, let's go make this stuff happen. You know, I'll be brutally honest with you, it wasn't very difficult. Um, myself and the older son head off this way Chris and the younger son head off that way within 20 minutes. I can hear Chris motioning me over. The youngest boy, he found her. My little buddy Tristan Troyer found it. And I brought his, his older brother, Rollin Troyer, along with me as well. I wanted to bring them with because I knew I didn't make a good hit on it. We left it till morning. Um, Truth be told, he only went, oh, about 200 yards and he died on his hooves. He didn't even bed down. Um, but I brought my young friends with me because they've got young eyes. I knew it wasn't gonna be a good hit. I knew there was gonna be very, very, very little blood. And these, these boys, they're bloodhounds. They're bloodhounds with the eyes of an eagle. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Now you guys are going to drag this out by yourselves, right? After I put a tag on it? Man, it was one of those situations where, did we have to back out that night? No. It died running. Well, it was actually a quick death. But, you always play it safe. And you know what? I wouldn't, I am glad we didn't go look for it that night because I got to share that experience with two young boys. Them, Chris, myself, we're gonna cherish this experience for a lifetime. It's really what hunting is all about. Yes, that was a great deer. It was a five and a half year old buck that I've been tracking for several years now. That's good and great. But you know what hunting is really about? It's about putting some meat in the freezer, but mainly about having fun. Creating those memories that you can cherish for a lifetime, and I'll tell you what, it could not have possibly worked out more perfectly. It, it was one of the best sets I've ever had in my life, and I'm glad I was able to bring you along with me. 
when we return. Welcome to my backyard. As you're going to see here, I have targets set up at all different distances. I do that because I never know where that buck is going to show up, so I want to practice every possible situation. And grow them big with Steve Bartilla. Manufacturing those low impact, high odds AM stands. That needs to be factored into your overall plan because they're not going to happen by accident. So really study your property. You're watching Land of Whitetail. Land of Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. By Sig Sauer Electro Optics. Never settle. By Thompson Center, America's master gun maker. Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. And by Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Plus technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. If I want to hit that buck in October, I have to be practicing my shooting in June, July, and August. And that doesn't mean I'm going to pack a thousand arrows into the same target at the same distance. Welcome to my backyard. And as you're going to see here, I have targets set up at all different distances. I do that because I never know where that buck is going to show up, so I want to practice every possible situation. So what I like to do is I'll start at about 10 yards, and I'm only going to shoot about one or two arrows at this distance before I move on to the next target. This is gonna allow me to be ready at that moment of truth. So now we're gonna to move to 20. We got one shot, make it count. You know it's also all about angles. I wanna practice broadside quartering and steep quartering. That's really gonna help me this fall. So finally, I'm gonna move back to my max distance. That's 40 yards for me. I just wanna be sure I can make this shot if it presents itself. You know, when October rolls around, you have to be ready. That's why if you take the time in summer to prepare, to practice all distances, all angles, so you're ready when that big moment arrives. Manufacturing high odds, low impact stands is the major name of the game when it comes to what we're doing out here, managing our habitat. Afternoon, evening sits are relatively easy to come up with that low impact because we've got a pretty darn good idea where the deer are going to be when we're heading in the stand. If we're doing it right, they're going to be back in their bedding areas. Okay. That means we can walk through those food sources. Now that deer aren't using their transition zones that much yet at that time of day when we're slipping in in the afternoon. And we can generally slip out through the timber because by the time it's dark, we're hoping that the majority of the deer have passed us and they're out on the food sources now. Mornings are very difficult by comparison. And manufacturing those low impact, high odds AM stands, that needs to be factored into your overall plan because they're not going to happen by accident. So really study your property. Look at those areas where, hmm, I've got that bedding site that's pretty darn close to the road. All I've got to do is jump off the road, pop up into the woods 100 yards, and man, I'm hunting, where you can slip in off the road. And you happen to have yourself a great place where you can set up an ambush for a very, very high odd set. Try to find those low impact morning setups. What you really need to do is you need to put in thought. You need to study your ground before you start making improvements. When you're making that initial plan, how can I manufacture low impact, high odds AM sets? Where are the locations that I can go ahead and make it so they're bedding in an area where I can slip in easy, or they're transitioning through an area that I can slip in easy? One of the best low impact AM setups you can make are those pinch points between the crops and that nasty erosion cut that goes down the side. They're going to either have to cross down at the bottom of that erosion cut or they're going to wrap the top between the tip of that erosion cut and the edge of the field that they don't want to walk out into. Look at your access and look at, okay, how can I go ahead and make a doe bedding area in an area that I can slip up nice and easy? So I'm hunting just like I'm hunting in the middle of the property, but I'm barely in there. 
Now, the more you study that ground, look for those areas where, hmm, I've got a major food source here. I'm not gonna stop them from going to this major food source no matter what I do. Now, it's this great big soybean, corn, and alfalfa series of fields. But, is there a way I can backdoor into there in the morning? And then go ahead and create a nice little kill plot so that I can backdoor in and get out without them ever knowing you're there. AMs are by far the most challenging low impact high odd stand setups we can have. The more work we put into it, the more thought we put into it up front, we can manufacture those high odds, low impact AM setups. And we do that, we're effectively hunting our property without the deer knowing we're even there. The point is, is put thought into how you're going to hunt these properties in the morning. Design it so that you can have high odds, low impact AM setups. They very rarely occur naturally, but man, if you can manufacture them, you are so much farther ahead in the game. Thank <laughs> you.